how's it going guys and welcome to the first video in my second season at Inter Milan uh, we've made some big changes to the squad and I'm going to get to that right now straight away at the transfers um, I'll quickly go through the outs first and I won't go through every single one of them because time is the main priority I'll just go through the main ones um, Alexander Butner went to Feyenoord for 3.1 million wasn't in my plans signed him last season young talented player but it just wasn't in my plans uh, Lucio went to Crystal Palace for 135,000. Great player he is, but he was back up last season. He got another year older, and they uh, cashed in on him. He went to Crystal Palace and is playing in the Premier League. Uh, Walter Samuel, great servant to the club. Um, he went basically to Brazil for 700,000. Pablo Piatti went to Boca Juniors. Um, I talked about him quite a few times uh, throughout the last season. Just a good, good technical player. Um, but you know his his natural fitness let him down. He says he's got an, an eight natural fitness, but it's more like a two. And I'm not trying to exaggerate that. Whenever he come on the pitch, he got injured. Um, and basically, he's injured now with a virus, though. And that really speaks for itself, really. Um, let's have a little scroll down. Marco Andrioli went to Torino for nine hundred and seventy-five thousand. And there's a good, good like a uh, few youth players or younger players what went out. Um, I needed to free up, you know. I need to get some more money for transfers for one, and um, you know the wages. I need to get some of the wages back, and that's why I got rid of them. Say for example, Joel Ob, really good player, but he plays in a position that I don't really use. You know, left side of midfield, and um, really good player he is for his age, but. You know, we just needed the money and everything like that, and he wasn't in my plans anyway. But I'm going to go to the main exit, shall we say, and that is Erbe Emanuelson. He went to PSG for £17.5 million, and I think it is not a bad bit of business, to be honest. He's 28 for one, which is not old, but we signed him last season, um, as you know, because I talked about him so much. Signed him last season for £3 million. Uh, we've made like basically a 14 million profit on a guy, but he was such a good player last season, scoring 15 goals in Serie A, uh, seven assists, and he had a great average rating, scoring 18 overall. Um, but I brought a new player player in in his position, and I just thought probably by you know in the future his stats will go down, cashing on him, and that's what happens. You know, football manager is really realistic. When a player has a great season their value goes up and all the big clubs want to buy him. So Erby Emanuelson, he had uh, he had Atletico Madrid after him. Liverpool showed a bit of an interest and PSG made a bid um, very quick, to be honest. Um, but I didn't want to let him go. But, you know, I ended up letting him go and uh, cashed in. Anyway, that's it for the exits. Let's go to the ins. Um, Lorenzo Christig, I think that's how you pronounce his name anyway. He's coming from Parma. It was already an Inter player, but you know, in Italy they've got all this about co-owned players and everything like that. But this guy is very talented. Twenty-one years old. He's a big player, six-two, um, and he's he's going to get better and better and better. And we've got him at a cheap price from, you know, the co-owned the other co-owned club, um, Parma. Next of all is a transfer that I'm very, very excited about. Andros Townsend from Tottenham, £10 million. I said in uh, one of my last videos of last season that I wanted to change things because Douglas Costa got a lot of our chances last season and he squandered quite a lot of them. I think Andros Townsend, when he gets into these positions, he'll be looking for you know, looking for the forward, say Ben Teke, or trying to finish him himself. And he's got a better, got better finishing. And he's going to get better and better, and he's you know he's got better work rate and teamwork, so he's going to be my first choice in that position for sure. Another um, transfer, the biggest transfer for us uh, this season, Andre Schürrle. He was transfer listed by Chelsea, and you know on my Chelsea save, which I've finished now, but I won't give any spoilers. I don't know if I'll be uploading that last video before this. I don't know so. You know, on my Chelsea save anyway, I didn't use him enough. And when I did use him, he performed really well. Um, and, you know, just to see him, uh, you know, transfer listed, my eyes lit up straight away and I wanted to buy him. I was just, you know, gutted I didn't use him enough on my Chelsea save. But 
I had a guy in that position called Eden Hazard and it's hard not to use him because he's such a good player. So I'm looking forward to seeing how Andre Scherler does this season for us and the coming seasons. Um, I got another striker. So Ben Teke and Damio will be contesting for number one spot. I think I've paid a bit too much for him. Maybe. Because I probably could have got a better player for 15 million in this position, you know, in forward position. Um, but I've always wanted to see what he's all about on Football Manager because I remember on the last one, everyone was talking about him, what a great player he is and everything like that. He's 25 now on this save in 2014. But I think he'll improve and they, you know, in European football, he's got a, with all these facilities we've got, uh, he's pretty big, he's 6'2", 12 stone, nearly 13 stone, so he's going to be a handful for the defences anyway. So I'm really, you know what, I'm, I'm happy with bought him. I've strengthened uh, the defence here, um, Balanta from River for 13 million. Um, need to have a strong defence in the Champions League for sure, and this guy is just going to improve as well, he's only 21 years old. So we've put a lot of money into younger players. We haven't been buying really older players. Um, buried. We've got rid of the old players and brought in some, you, you know, some of the youth, so, so to speak. Um, but I like the mix and match between experience and youth. Let's let's put it that way. So he's 21 years old. Look, let's just look at his stats. Say his main stats. His tackling's already 16. His marking is 18, which is really good. He needs to improve on his heading. Um, his strength and his stamina and everything like that will improve as well. So I'm just really happy we've got him for that good price. We were going to try and get Kurt Zuma, but I thought, you know, I've I've used him a lot in previous saves. So let's try a new player. Uh, David Santon from Bayern Munich. Obviously, he's at Newcastle, but I wanted to improve left back position, even though Nagamoto is a great player. Um, but David Santon, I've had him on a previous save and he's such a He's a very, very talented player. Um, so I think we've got him at a good price. He's just going to improve as well. Okay, and here's a couple of the experienced players we've brought in. And I think we've brought them in at decent prices. And I've used one of them a lot. I, I think Montari. I'll talk about Montari in a bit. But first of all is Mikel Arteta. I do like Spanish players. You know, let's just uh, get his training. I'm being on at the moment, yeah. I do like Spanish players. Um, most of the Spanish players I've had on Football Manager turned out to be really good. Um, you know, team players as well, that's the thing I like. Um, I brought Arteta in for backup for Kovac because he keeps on getting injured um, quite a lot, to be honest. Um, but I'm going to have to probably, you know, Kovac, I'm going to have to look at his training regime and everything like that and probably make it a bit lighter. But Arteta, when he, when he played for Everton, amazing player, and he's uh, done some good things for Arsenal as well. But he's going to either be in the lineup or back up. Um, there's a lot of games this season, so he will be being used. And for 32, he's still got a lot in the tank, and uh, hopefully he'll improve as well. And next of all, and last of all, is Sully Montari from AC Milan, 1.8 million, very good price. I've had their Montari so many times on many different saves on Football Manager and he's always a player that performs amazingly. His work rate is always high, his teamwork's always high. Just look at him, right? This is such a bargain. He's Sackling 16 for one, which I want. I want a ball winning midfielder. You know, that's 16. He's got great work rate, great strength, stamina. Decent natural fitness, decent acceleration. This guy is a perfect ball winning midfielder in my opinion. And great bargain. Every single football manager you can pick this guy up below 5 million. Or shall I say every single manager for the last 3 years you can pick him up below 5 million. This guy highly recommend. Simple as that. So I'll show you pre-season. Yeah I know I went off on one there but that guy... I will recommend him to anyone. You know, pre-season we only had four games. We had a 3-0 victory against Wuhan. Um, Christian Bentek is going a hat-trick. And Mateo Kovic got injured again. He kept on getting injured last season. Or towards the end of last season. That's why I brought him at Arteta. 
Uh, we beat Rene 5 0. Shirley scoring two goals, Benteke, Andros Townsend, and Balanta with the others. Uh, Borgo Manero, I think that, that's the name of their team. We beat them 5 0. Andros Townsend scoring an hat trick, and David Santon with a brace. And then we had a 2 0 victory against Belerna. Uh, Benteke and Juan Jesus scoring the goals. So we're going to go into the Super Cup final against Juventus. This is going to be a very tough game because we need to get the cohesion, you know, in the team and everything. Some new players playing. Um, so Kavic, Nagamoto is actually suspended. Cambiasso is suspended. Kavic is injured. So the lineup we're going to be using is Benteke, Schurler, Townsend, Darren Fletcher, Montari, Arteta, David Santon, Balanta, Ranaccia, um, and Revlia and Handanovic. So let's go to the game using the same instructions and everything that I normally use. Well I did select a captain because I want Cambiasso to be the captain but and I had Fletcher as the backup so I don't know why it's saying that. See look. I've to to Zanetti in a bit. So Montari's morale is down because of his bad stay at AC Milan. He was basically in the reserves for most of that time. We'll have to have a good team talk with the players because some of them weren't happy at the previous clubs. And, you know, they're coming to a decent squad where everyone's been happy. So, hopefully they'll uh, take that from the other players. Sorry about that. Alright, Revelia to Arteta. Townsend. Running at the defence. And it's a penalty. After that, were like 13 seconds that were. So Benteke should be taking this penalty. I've, I've put that in as the main penalty taker. Erbia Manuelson was the, the penalty taker last season. And Benteke fires it in to make it 1-0. Not even a minute on the clock. I mean, people talk about these sort of trophies. This is basically like, you know, the charity shield in England. But any single trophy I want to, you know, I can get. I want to get. Um, Buffon, very far out there. They were like Pogba to Lorente, Peluso to Pogba. Right, Revelia. Yeah, I've given Revelia a new contract. His performances last season were just extraordinary, and it was amazing. At the age he is, that he's improved as a player. Like, his stats have just shot up. And that's basically playing week in, week out, really. I think the danger... Oh, let's just be careful here. Pogba and Juventus equalise. I think the danger for an older player is when they're not playing, they just, you know, degrade. And that, that happens in in real life as well you know Ashley Cole for example he's knocking on at Chelsea um, and being playing and when he does play now he's, he's not really what he used to be and I think it was down to that injury he had right 40 minutes have gone 1-1 one, one. it's going to take a while for our team to gel together though it always does so our third, you know our early season form might not be up to scratch. Right, I'm lucky. I'm just gonna have a look at the overview. I'm gonna bring on uh, Christie for Fletcher. Let's start the second half. I 
Juventus uh, won the Serie A last season which were pretty dramatic you know last game of the season we could have won it but you know we drew against Napoli and they beat Saluso I think it were Vidal to Banucci is that and Montari gets it away Motta, Pogba, Vidal, Pogba again, very dangerous, great save, right, I'm going to change things around here, Let's not sit back. Vidal with a corner. Why not? Here gets it away. Sixty-three minutes on the clock. Pogba with a free kick. Shirley gets it, but. Shirley gets it away, but straight to the Juventus player, Peluso, to Pogba. That Vidal again picks it up. That Vidal, Pogba. Alright, so they're passing it, it's fair to say they're passing it about well. We're not really getting into them. Peluso, good block, and it's a corner to them. I don't know if this is on extended. Right. Now it's on key. Seems to be some pointless highlights, really. Okay, corner, um, goal kick. But straight to Juventus player, right? Come on. That balance to Santon. Prestige to Ben Teke. Now Ben Teke can't get it. <sighs> this is a really boring game to watch. Pogba. Alright, just let's get some flow. Get a bit of play together. Fuck's sake. Alright, Peluso. And Donovic with another great save there. Um. Have a little look. Okay, let's do that. Confirm. Doubt. But that was uh, terrible by Juventus. Anyway, this is a boring game. Sorry about this, guys. I think it probably benefit you skipping it forward a little bit if you're still watching. Uh, the players are playing terrible. I mean, what was that all about? It's like the Chuckle Brothers playing. Adanovic uh, collects it there, thank God. Eighty minutes. I'd probably suggest if this goes into extra time, I'd suggest you're probably skipping it forward, so uh, you aren't bored out your brains. They've got a corner anyway, so they might end up scoring, which they have. So it's 2-1. Um, looks like Juventus have uh, won this. Our flow of the game and, you know, we need to, the players need to basically get used to each other, really. And I think after that we'll be all right. Sanchez. 
Santon comes forward. Nice move. Christie back to Santon. The Italians are working as a team there. But it's a free kick to us. I don't think anything will happen from this. I go in with the free kick. Booth on collects. So that's probably our last chance at game anyway. So what a strange game this has been, really. It just seems to be weird. Arteta. See, we're passing it about decent now. Nah. Nice. But that's it. Juventus win the Super Cup. Not the biggest trophy in the world, but I still wanted to win. Um, but let's hope we can get our own back this season. We're in Serie A. So thanks for watching, guys. Sorry the game was boring. Um, hopefully you still watched it up until this point. Just want to say thank you and take care.